Welcome back to Matrix TV News, where we continue tonight with Lloyd Pye, author of Everything You Know is Wrong. Lloyd Pye is an author, researcher, and lecturer in the field of alternative knowledge. He calls on over 30 years of experience to write and speak about the origins of life, human origins, and the work of Zachariah Zitchin. This broad base of knowledge makes Lloyd one of the world's leading proponents of intervention theory of origins. Welcome, Lloyd. Thank you, Kate. Uh, glad to be here. We're delighted to have yeah. you on. It's well time we've had you on. We've been on the air eight years and just now getting you on here. But first we have to ask, you have a book called Everything You Know is Wrong. Why do you say that? Well, because I really firmly believe that everything that we think we know now that is a, a base core science reality, that we, you know, things that we just take for granted are in fact wrong and will over time prove to be as silly to people 300 years from now as we we look back 300 years at the flat earth people and at the center or earth at the center of the universe people and we think you know how could they be so stupid and i'm sure that two or three hundred years from now people are going to look back at us for as smart as we think we are as for as much as we think we're on top of everything and say how could they be so stupid and, <laughs> I really believe that. Right. I say that already. <laughs> Lloyd, when, when, you, uh, when you say intervention theory, a theory of what? And who's intervening? Well, the theory of intervention is in contrast to Darwinian evolution and creationism and intelligent design. Those, those are basically the two. You, you can just lump creationism and intelligent design together. They're just creationism is the stupid way of going about it, and intelligent design is the intelligent way of going about it trying to promote God as the, God with a capital G as the creator of everything. And of course, if everybody knows that Darwinian evolution is opposed to that. Intervention theory is a middle ground that people like me try to stake out and show that the facts do indeed indicate that that middle ground is where the truth lies, as is usually the case. It's clear that that evolution does not work. The creationists and the intelligent designers are right in that in that sense, and the intelligent designers really do have wonderful, wonderful technical proofs of that. Darwinian evolution is just wrong, but that leaves, as far as the intelligent designers or the creationists are concerned, well, the only other alternative is that God did it, God with a capital G. Yeah. What we say is that multiple gods with a small g, meaning just very superior flesh and blood beings right. or flesh and whatever, you know, whatever they were, something came here and intervenes and creates life on earth, has put life here from the beginning, Lloyd, has managed it from the beginning and created us. Aren't some of the clues actually in Genesis in the Bible? If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't it say, and uh, the God, God made us in, uh, in, his, in their image, in their image and in us and our, it's always in the plural. Right, right. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that the people that wrote the Old Testament used the original Sumerian stone tablets. You know, the old in the old days, the, the um, bottom line of truth was it's written in stone. Mm. And that was the Sumerian tablets, which were, in fact, written in stone. They were actually written in clay that was then fired into stone, but they were stone tablets. So the writings that, that they left, some of it comes down word for word intact, one of the phrases that comes down that way is, we shall make the Adamu, this is what the Sumerians wrote, we shall make the Adamu in our own image after our own likeness. And that comes down in the, in the Old Testament as, we shall make the Adam, right. or Adam, in our own image after our own likeness. And we actually have, a, uh, I guess, a Sumerian tablet showing that, that uh, depiction. It's amazing to me. And also, you know, if you read further in that Genesis thing, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a Bible person to that degree, but it says that the Anunnaki or the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. I mean, people just missed that whole thing. Right, the giants in the earth in those days. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot that they missed. The flood, too, you know, the flood story of Noah has a, a very, very clear, clear corollary in the Sumerian tablets 
with with the tale of Utnapishtim. Now, you know, Utnapishtim is a long word, and, and Noah comes out of that. I don't really know how. Lloyd, we have, <laughs> we have, uh, we have only 15 seconds here. Let, let's pick this up when we come back from the commercial break. All right. All right, our guest, a first-time guest, and welcome to have him, Lloyd Pye. We'll be right back. And we have Lloyd Pye with us. Lloyd, um, how does this intelligent design uh, Zachariah Zitchin thing fit in together? We are great fans of Zachariah. The 12th planet was where, actually where I started a lot of my information. And how does uh, your information tie in with his? Well, my, my research field for about 20 years <clears throat> excuse me, was hominoids, which is Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, Yeti. You know, there, there are four different kinds of those around the world. And I figured out fairly early into it that what are called prehumans, and this is the Australopithecines and the early Homos, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, right through Neanderthal, that all of those up to Cro-Magnon were clearly not humans. Physiologically, they're not humans. They are upright walking primates. So I accepted that they were hominoids, that they were the ancestors not not prehumans as anthropologists call them, but really pre or, or ancestors of hominoids. So it it told me that humans did not have a place on the flow chart of planet Earth until the Cro-Magnons appeared at about 200,000 years ago. But I was stymied. I I could say we didn't evolve here. We we're not part of this planet's natural fauna. But I don't know where I didn't know where we came from. Then finally, in about 1990, someone directed me to the 12th planet that had been published in 1976. Yeah. And lo and behold, I had what I needed. What I could believe in was a plausible answer of where we came from and how we got here. Yeah, I felt but the same. I had what Sitchin didn't have. I had a front end that he didn't have, and he had a back end that I didn't have. So I knew that if I put the two together, I could create something that would be new and original and important, and it, you know that, that everything you know is wrong, wrong turned out to be that. So the the um, where do these creatures or characters come who, from? Who are you mean intervening? ETs? ETs are, is it ET or is it another dimension? No, it's, it, it's a group of individuals. According now, this, this is if you just go with the Sumerian tablets and how they write and how Sitchin makes that interpretation. They're called the Anunnaki, and they're from another planet that is in our solar system. But it's not like the other planets. It's a, it's a planet that was captured by the solar system as it was cruising through the universe. Apparently, planets get away from their forming system sometimes, and they just become like rogues or renegades just floating along. And apparently, our solar system captured this one so that it's like a comet. It has a long elliptical orbit of 3,600 years. And on this planet developed a civilization way ahead of ours, uh, and, and so it's, it's a higher civilization, call, and the people are called the Anunnaki. And they look like us. They are very similar to us, at least physiologically, so that when they came to, to Earth to set up shop here and do the work that they were going to do about 300,000 years ago, minimum, um, they came and they decided that they wanted to create a slave and a servant. So they took the creature of Earth, what they called the creature of Earth, which was the, the being that was here, and they made something more like themselves. So my assumption, my assumption, is that they found Neanderthals or what the hominoid that's called Almas, which I think are, are Neanderthal types. The the hominoids that were called that are called Almas today, they found some of those, and they said, oh, this is as close as we're going to get to what we are. We're going to take this as our model, and we're going to build a local variation on this creature using our own DNA. After in our own image, after our own likeness, uh -huh. so we can interact with these folks. So, so can, is this is this where the atom comes in? You see, this is where the atom atom comes in. They, you see they test called, tubes in the background and stuff. These people, the the Anunnaki, called their creation, their human creation, the Adamu, A D A M U. You, you know, you wonder where does the name Adam, Adam come out of the Bible? You could have picked anything, yeah. and it's not really a common name that far back necessarily, but boom, there it is. So it's the Adamu 
plural, right. that um, the Anunnaki so, called... Uh, so, Lloyd, called, what, what we're saying here is then that, that the writers who wrote the Bible a couple of thousand years ago took these stories that were uh, mythology or ancient stories to them and put, them, put those words and stories into what we now have as the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. Now, the interesting thing about it is we are now 2,000 years removed from the writers of, of the Bible, of the Old Testament. We're 2,000 years removed from those guys. They, when they were writing the Old Testament, were 2,000 years from the people that wrote the, uh, the stone tablets. And so you know what Anunnaki. happens when you whisper something to somebody <laughs> in a party and it exactly. gets around the table. Exactly. <laughs> so it's amazing to me that they got it as close to the telling of the Sumerian story of, of stories of origin as they did. Right. Uh, clearly, clearly, a lot of things in there that were not in the Sumerian tablets, but but uh, enough of it comes down to where it's clear that they were using that as a as a base of reference for how things came to be the way they were. Amazing. And there's so much more than just the human uh, the the writings. The actual megaliths that are all over the world, not just in Egypt in the so-called cradle of civilization, in many places throughout the world. And when we come back, I don't want to go into it now because we have to go to a break. But when we come back, I want you to talk about how they actually got to be here. And did these Anunnaki have anything to do with that? I'm sure they did. <laughs> we'll be right back with Lloyd Pye.